<laughs> and then I'm going to try and facilitate questions. Would somebody mind helping me take notes just because um, I don't want to miss anything? I'm trying to help facilitate. I'll help you take some notes. Thanks, Callie. Okay. You're welcome. I'm going to put in the chat in case folks weren't able to copy um, the two questions. Oh, what did I do? Okay. Sam, yeah. it looks very peaceful at your place. Your backyard's very nice. I Thank you. Yeah, we, uh, I'm, I've been having serious bandwidth issues in the house, uh, but I seem to be well outside, so thankfully the weather's holding. <laughs> yeah, how was that a couple of weeks, or was it last week where we got the snow? That was probably a little rough. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know what it is, my, uh, <clears throat> my first grader um, is doing so much streaming and, and sort of remote stuff on her little pad that uh, there's competing attention, I think, for the internet, so. <laughs> and you're not winning, right? <laughs> no, I'm not. She's chatting with her friends, and they're, yeah. like, sending each other, you know, big pictures that they find on the internet. And, been kind of fun to watch though. So. Yeah. Hi, this is Lori. I'm going to have to jump off at 10 o'clock. Okay. Apologize I, in advance. And I'm sorry my picture profile isn't there and or me, but I don't know how to get it there. It used to be there and it no longer is. Uh, you're talking about the still image? It's in your Zoom profile. You have to log in on Zoom and go into your account. I did I like that. Also the For some reason, it just has my name. It used to be there. I don't know where it went, but Aww. anyway. So you just no. have to look at the writing because I'm not dressed for the meeting today. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, Celeste. Hey, Sansaria. Sanrisa. Oh, my God. I said Sansaria. I'm like off today. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah there's Sansaria too. And yeah, she gets, we get that a lot. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for all that you're doing. We found out you were doing work with the women's shelter. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Women's shelter need clothes or anything? Do you know I have lots of bags of clothes? Oh. Okay. Um, well, I think we have 20 minutes. We can get started. I put in the chat the questions that Mary Saul shared. So we can start um, with the first one. So when considering how we might prioritize solutions, one clear criteria will be the focus efforts to recover those populations and aspects of our economy that have been hit hardest um, by the current health and economic crisis. So what communities have been hit the hardest and what aspects of our economy have been hit the hardest? And just as a reminder, the communities we identified through previous um, discussions within the task force are black and brown communities, low income communities, indigenous communities, children, um, those with varying abilities, animals, plants, and the environment generally, workers, um, population as a whole, including potential mothers, those individuals with compromised immune system, and then those individuals that are unhoused. So I'll open it up there um, to see what folks' thoughts are around um, any constituencies that we might be missing or just their observations around those communities that I've outlined and how they've been impacted. Hey Naomi, can I start? I forgot how to raise my hand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I really appreciated um, Jeremy's comments. Um, I think starting with the context, uh, giving, giving that, um, some thought here for the first couple of minutes before we dive in to specific communities is important. Um, you know, the demand shock associated with the response, we actually don't, haven't seen the bottom yet. Um, so in the course of about a month, we wiped out all of the jobs we created since the last economic crisis. So about 22 million people filed for unemployment between um, 2010, February 2010 and February 2020, uh, we created about 20 million jobs. We lost 22 million jobs so far. And there were another 4.4 million. I think I saw the headline today. So, um, you know, I think understanding the context, and I really appreciated Jeremy saying that's kind of the overarching thing is really important here um, because we haven't seen the bottom of the demand shock yet. Uh, so we don't even know what we're responding to. Um, until we see until we see the bottom and 
it's sort of a hard concept to grasp. Um, and you see that reflected in, you know, milk being poured into gutters. Uh, you see that obviously reflected in the commodity price environment. Um, and so um, I just wanted to take a moment and acknowledge that because I thought that was really powerful from Jeremy and I've been thinking a lot about that myself. So. Hey Naomi, you can keep running with this if you want. I'm, I can facilitate if you'd like as well. Oh, well, jump on in whenever you want then, Jacob. Um, um, do others have um, just kind of initial thoughts before we kind of dive into things too? Thank you, Sam, for that. I think that's really point, like important to keep top of mind is we're just at the beginning of this, even though it feels like we've been in this and everything has not been going well for a while and we're only at the starting point. You know, I think the thing that kind of stings about everywhere where we are right now is it feels to me that it's always the same communities that are hit the hardest. It's the communities that are hit the hardest with job loss. They're the communities that are hit the hardest with climate problems. They're the communities that are always kind of the pile on communities. And so it's just, to me, it's just a really unfortunate situation that these same groups continue to get kind of piled on in this way. And it seems that any kind of effort to rebound and to stimulate areas in, in any need to be almost like directionally focused at these communities. And I don't know how you do that, but it's, um, it's always the same list and it's hard to see. Thanks, Kelly. Others thoughts generally, or even looking at the um, the list of communities you identified, is there any that are missing? I am a little bit. Do you think you could bring me down my chapter? Yeah. Any that are missing from the list think, Marcel sent out that you all I, brainstormed? I don't think any are missing. I mean, I think we have a couple of broad catch-alls here, population as a whole. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I mean, I think the uh, the the, the reality is this is historic in how it's impacting uh, the entire economy, including uh, the most vulnerable populations. And so, um, you know, I think that was the other part of what Jeremy said that was so powerful for me was, you know, powerful. Um, you did a really good job with everybody. How do we get dollars to the people who need it most? I think that can kind of serve to guide how we parse out some of these sub subgroups um you know the the stimulus dollars that went out you know a lot of the criticism thus far has been that they went to people who didn't need it uh, and some of them have been i think uh called out publicly and have returned the money but harvard for example i think got 10 million of the small business loans they have like the largest endowment in uh in the education system and so they gave back the money but i think this issue of people who don't need money or getting the money needs to be addressed in whatever we do um so maybe that's a good place to start kind of in line with with Kelly's comments too. Yeah. So is that how um, anything else that we want to define as quote hardest hit? Uh, Jacob, this is Craig. Hey, Craig. <clears throat> I, I have a niece and a nephew, both in their early 20s. One worked in a restaurant in Denver on Larimer Square, and the other one worked for a Firestone uh, doing brakes and mechanic work. Both of them lost their jobs. Mm hmm. They're, neither of them fits the typical, I guess I should say, the uh, definition that we've chosen here. So I don't think it's unfair to add to this anyone who's lost a job. Mm -hmm. uh, have to be a member of the traditionally impacted communities. Uh, and I'd like to add as well, this is Lori. I have a teenage or two teenage daughters. And we got the announcement yesterday that potentially school wouldn't be coming back until January. And they are literally suffering in ways that none of us can even relate to. And our teen population are so saddened by this. And we hear about all the things that we can help to tell them and say, but there's, I feel like there's nothing we can say to help them right now because they feel like they're being gypped. And I know as adults, we are as well, but I think we're able to process it better. And I, it's similar to when I used to say, you know, eat all your dinner, there are people starving in Africa. It didn't really mean anything to her because she mm. hadn't experienced it. And then ironically, she was going to Africa with her school and that was canceled. And now they're saying it probably won't happen. So it's going to be her senior year and they're not going to do all those traditional things. So all of our teens are suffering and then middle school is hard enough as it is. And so my middle schoolers is also unrailing. So I think our teens are now becoming a part of that vulnerable community. 
Yeah. So I, I, and I heard young people and what Craig said as well. So adding to the list, anyone who has lost a job and teens and perhaps other young workers. Yeah. Or lost school experiences. I don't mm -hmm. know how you, you or yeah. connection with, with other teens. Um, one thing I've been thinking about, and I, I'll admit, I don't know enough about like the efforts locally, but, you know, looking at California and how they've put together funds for those that are undocumented workers. And I know we have um, particular like black and brown communities in there, but I think about those that do so much of the work that drives our economy that aren't getting that relief right now. So I don't know if it makes sense to call that out explicitly, um, but that's just something I've been thinking about too. Mm. Yeah, same here. There was, um, if you get a chance to watch it, 60 Minutes had a piece Sunday about um, kind of the food response and the amount of uh, the reliance on undocumented workers. And, you know, to I think another point that was raised in kind of the prep for this, you know, um, it's the folks, it's the, the folks who we refuse to acknowledge that when we have a crisis like this, it exposes the inequities to Naomi's point, undocumented workers who actually produce the food or help produce the food that we're all relying on right now are one of the most critical links in the system. Um, so that's a great point. So we have about five minutes. I'm going to um, share that. Mike, I did mute you. Um, so yeah, unmute yourself. Uh, just one thing that um, has really been brought home from here, or from what I've seen, is the folks who lack the social capital. Um, and I don't know how you make that or create that, but there's definitely a, a group of, you know, it's always been like who you know, it's not what you know, but who you know. And I think that's become very clear as we've looked at uh, businesses that have been able to get the Paycheck Protection Act. Uh, there was, a, I think, a thing out in Denver Business Journal today showing that basically um, white male-owned businesses were way more successful um, than, uh, than women-owned businesses. Um, there's, a, I think, a class action lawsuit for folks who, uh, for Muslims who are, are banking kind of discrimination against Muslims. So I, I think there's, I, I don't know how we put that. And we, I mean, look, 20, 25% of our neighbors are without a job right now. So there's a, a huge list of people to deal with, but mm -hmm. it does feel as though the lack of, of social capital of knowing where to access this information. Um, that's really been brought home to me. It's probably always been the case, but it's really been brought home to me in this, um, sure. And similarly, from the real estate standpoint, now we're seeing a discrepancy between those who own their real estate and those who are renting or leasing because they have no idea if the owner or their landlord owns their property outright and, can, and would need to have them leave immediately. And so I'm starting to see people call me saying, what are my options as a tenant versus a homeowner where there's all these things put in place to help me for the next three months. Several people will be put out with no job and no way to put down a deposit for another rental. Yeah. Hey, one other um, thing I want to, oh, sorry. Go no, ahead. I, maybe last comment and then we need to look at the list and see if there's other criteria we want aside from those suggested there as potentials. We only have a couple minutes. Okay, so I'll talk really fast. So I'm on my local school board and I'm thinking and kind of tagging along with what Lori was mentioning, you know, the, the teens and the young people population now that is going to have a lot of mental health issues and, and questions and needing support. And we're going to go to our schools and our teachers to provide that. But our schools and our communities, like the school funding in Colorado is bad and coming out of this is going to be even less funds for the schools, but even more needs. Um, and, uh, and we're seeing the schools are stepping up to provide food. Um, and it's just disheartening to see that they've been, they've already are hit really hard. And as this comes, the, their funding, our, we're, our district is small and we're looking at losing almost $750,000. Um, and so, but we know our needs are going to be, um, exasperated. Higher. So I just yeah. think it's, it's a hard situation for school districts. Great. So um, looking through these other potential, create jobs, make housing more affordable, improve respiratory health, co-benefits to build back stronger and repair existing inequities, high impact in meeting our overarching goal, which is both mitigation and equity, uh, net benefits to Denver's overall economy. Anything we're missing there? I don't think we're missing anything there necessarily, but when I, you know, just look at what we're seeing 
through all of this with the, the reduced improved air quality, specifically because people aren't on the road um, and are staying home. I, I think about how do we, you know, what's going to be that piece that can really cover a lot of different things and provide economic benefit to people and everything. And I, I just keep on thinking about how we need to um, make our transit system very affordable, um, if not free. You know, it's a way of us keeping people off the road. It's a way that low-income communities won't have to, they can save money on transportation. It improves our air quality. It just has so many benefits that I think are, are sounds, sounds like a, um, a good segue into what we want to focus on. So I'm going to move everybody out of breakout rooms. We'll probably have um, a couple minutes for people to transition over, but need to do that now. Sorry, everyone, closing all of these up. Jacob, do I need to stop the recording formally or does it automatically do it? Um, go ahead and stop it. Okay.